Hi, I'm Tom Pickering. This is my guide to big carp fishing. I'm going to show you the setups of the rods, the reels, the lines and the feeders, how to prepare the bait, how to put the bait on the feeder. This is a big one. This has just took 50 yard of line off. Oh my God, get in. Oh, look at that beauty. Oh my God. Oh, yellow fulker. Beautiful. That's the biggest calf I've ever caught, that. One of the things about fishing in the winter is the fish move out and they move at distance. And you've got to get to them. If you don't get to the fish, you won't catch any fish. So, as you can see, I'm winding and winding, I'm fishing quite a long distance. I'm trying to find where the feeding fish are and that's what you have to do in the winter. Fishing in the winter is, is more about location of fish and usually when the water in the winter goes clearer the fish move out and move out and back off. So there's one thing you don't need to do is feed a lot because the fish back away from food in the winter. But to get to these fish, if you don't have your tackle set up you won't get there. You've got to have the right gear, the right setup. So when I'm fishing from 60 metres up to 80 metres, which is a long way, you can only get there with the right equipment. And the right equipment usually is this. I use, and it's only my opinion, it's what I use myself, I use a 13 foot rod. It's got big eyes on and, and it's a strong rod. And that's going to give you the enability to cast that distance. You've got some power. You don't want something that's too soft, you want something that's long. You can make it hard or you can make it easy, so get the tackle that makes it easy. Then when you come to reels, you want a big reel, big rod, big reel. And this is a 5.5 thousand. So it's got a big spool on it. That's to enable the line to come off nice and smooth. You can't use a three or a four thousand style reel to go that distance. You've got to have a reel that's big enough with the, with the spooling that gets you that distance. So if you've got the rod and the reel right, then what you've got to do, you've got to get the line right. So most of my line on that is a five pound line, like an 0.17. You might think, oh, that's a bit, uh, a bit fine, but we've got a shock leader on. What's a shock leader? Well, it's a very important piece of fishing equipment when you're casting at distance. Because on my spool there, I've got 0.17, which is five pound line. Now if I want to cast at 70, 80 meters with that line, it will crack off. Trust me, most times with the amount of power that you're putting into the rod, you will crack off and your, your, your feeder will snap. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something that'll take the shock out of the cast. So we use eight or 10 pound line, which is 0.26 or 0.28, and it's attached by a full blood knot, which is attached to you, so you're putting your shock leader to your main line, and you wind it on your spool so it's double the length of the rod. Then, so basically, when I grab the feeder there, the knot is on the spool, so it's twice the length of the rod. And then you've got your feeder. So that when I'm casting, when I bring it back, all the power and the bend in the rod is going into the thicker line. Then the, when the thinner line comes out, it's gonna go the extra distance because it's not as fat a diameter and it'll get you there. That's why it's called a shock leader, to take all the shock out of the cast and you're not cracking off all the time. It's a great piece of equipment when you're fishing at distance and it's necessary. So, you get the rod right, you get the reel right, you get your line right, you get the line lay right so it's nearly on the outer spool, it's not inside it, you're halfway there. Rod, reel, line are very important. Get the balance right and you're on your way to good casting. On a venue in the winter, the location of fish is really important. So what I do well, lots of times is I'll, I might have more casts in the first hour than I will the rest of the day because I'm trying to get liners and indications to tell me where the fish are. So what I try and do is cast to a spot and if I don't get a, a liner on indication or a bite I'll cast a couple of metres that way or a couple of metres that way and I'm looking for them. And the moment I get an indication or a line or a bite, that's the spot I know where they are because they'll be shoaled up. So because they're shoaled up, that's what I'm looking for. And the moment that happens, I'm happy. And then what'll happen is then once you find the shoal, you might catch two or three, you'll stop getting liners indication and you might have to go a little bit further because they'll back away 
from the feed that's going in. One of the biggest things that anglers make is they try to go to the maximum first cast. And it's the worst thing you can do in my opinion. You've got to work to the, to the maximum. You've got to try and pinch them off as you go. Because what happens when you go to maximum is you either push them to somebody else or you push them to the sides away from you. So all the start short and work to your maximum. Hook baits. Now hook baits can be different to the different type of venue where you're going and it's usually down to colour and size to be honest with you. Everywhere I go you can go in different lakes and one will be yellow, one will be white, one will be pink. You've got to trial, it's trial and error, try and work out what there is on that particular venue and you'll be surprised you can go on two lakes side by side and there'll be a different colour hook bait but you can only find that out by trial and error. Today I've caught some fish on yellow yellow neons and what I've done I've actually used quick stop and you just put the quick stock on I'm using a size 12 hook because I'm fishing for big carp I'm using all 22 bottoms because like I said the big carp so I just got a yellow neon I put it straight through the middle like that and press it on gently get another one and I'm putting two neon now that they could be two red two white two orange or one of each to be honest with you but that is two yellows and that's as you can see we're 12 two neons and now I'm going to tuck them into that feeder and that I think on this place that's a perfect hook bait we're on to the terminal tackle now it's pretty simple pretty straightforward and to be honest with you that's a free running feeder it's a hybrid style feeder you can use a method or a hybrid but most people nowadays in commercial fishing want to use these hybrid. Why? One of the main advantages of having an inline feeder like this, there's nothing else going on. For example, you can get them with elasticated and other things, but for me, there's just too much going on. There's too many, there's a couple of more knots, you've got to trust the elastic. All I'm relying on is that one knot then. As long as you get that right, nothing else can go wrong. But I don't think there's a perfect hybrid. I don't think there's one made that's actually what I call perfect. So, every one I have, I have to change a little bit, I have to do a couple of little things on them. For example, I think this is about as good as it gets. But it's got holes in the bottom, and I don't like holes in the bottom. So what I do, I fill them in with glue. I just get a glue gun, and I just fill the holes in with glue so they're solid. Why? Well, it's simple. If there's holes in the bottom, when it's dropping through the water like that, I think it's pushing the pellets off, which is the last thing I want. I want it to get to the bottom in one spot all time it don't move so i glue mine in and that, that makes almost a perfect hybrid style feeder for me it goes on to a quick change bead so it bounces off the bead and the idea of that little bead is it comes in two parts so if i can take the hook length off and then if i want to change to a different hook length i can put it back on put the bead over and we're away like that one of the most important things feeder fishing is that the preparation of putting your bait on that feeder that's the number one thing and if you don't get that right you can forget about everything else you've got to get this right it's the number one thing so the first thing to do is when you prepare the bait now my bait is quite simply two mil pellets that have been softened and they've been softened until they swell up and what happens is when you press them they compress and then they sponge back out and that's what you want them to do on that feeder. I want them to compress onto the feeder, then when they're on the bottom, I want them to open up, which leaves your hook bait nice and free. So all I've done, I've just got some two mil normal pellets, I've got some two in one micros, and just put a few in, just a few, just to give it that little bit of color and distance, and of course the fish can't resist them. So it gives you a choice of two mil pellets and then the two in one micros. And I mix a different color micros in, and it look, I mean, look at that, it looks absolutely beautiful. You don't have to put a lot in. There's only a sprinkling of the two-in-one micros in there. But watch this when I put them on the feeder. So what you do, you now get the feeder. And now, without the hook bait, I press the first lot in. I put a few more on and I press it quite firm so that it's level with the top of the feeder. Then I get my hook bait. In this case, I've got two neons on a 12 put it on there then I press the hook into the pellets then I get the bait and I place it on the feeder where I want it which is smack in the middle I then put some more 
pellets around and just gently press it so you gentle all the time on the top until eventually you can see I put it in the palm of my hand and I press it quite firm but the hook bait's inside but it's streamlined as well when you're fishing at distance I need this to be streamlined and that is almost as good as it gets so as you can see I've got two mil micros I've got a few two in one mi micros on it with my hook bait is tucked in the middle just inside the top layer that is absolutely perfect it's nice and streamlined and I know that will go through the air without breaking up absolutely perfect that's the number one thing get that right and you're halfway there to catching fish it's like a little dinner plate I call it a dinner plate where it goes on the bottom and then it opens up so it's almost in palm of your hand with pellets and, it, and the fish can come in and, and suck them all off the dinner table So we've got the balance rod, we've got the balance reel, we've got the balance line and we've got this feeder all ready for casting, nice and streamlined. But we've done the number one thing but, but now what we've got to do, we've got to cast in the right spot in a straight line. How do we get it in a straight line in the same spot all the time? Well the first thing is you've got what we call a line clip on your reel and that needs setting at the distance that you want to cast it out. Sometimes you can put a bomb in, cast it to where you want to fish and then set it. But you want it to go to the same spot all the time, so you're going to set that line clip there at the distance that you want. Then the next thing you do is this. You pick a target on the far bank. For example, I've got that big tower there in front of me. And what you do, you face the target. You face the target because you're casting in a straight line. If I turn my body sideways and cast across my body, I'm taking all the power out. It's no good. So the first thing is, to face the target. The next thing is I'm right handed so if you're left handed reverse everything I'm talking about. My right hand is my, my direction where the direction of the rod will go and my left hand is my power. I'm going to pull the rod through to give you extra power to get that distance. So my right hand is my direction, my left hand is power. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to wind the feeder up so there's about just over a metre from the, from the tip to the actual feeder. Then I'm going to aim my right arm at the target that I'm going to fish. And what I'm going to do then, I'm going to bring the feeder back past the rod, like that, so it's in that position. And when it goes down there, my left hand then will go on that rod and it will pull it down. So with the direction and the power, that will send it in a straight line to the distance that I want. So all I do, I face my arm out like that, I bring the feeder past, when it gets there I put my left hand through and pull it through and you can see it going there and then I bring it back, hit the clip and you can see now it's hit the clip, it's gone plop on top of the water nice and smooth and that's all you've got to do and if you follow that, use the direction with your right hand, the power with the left hand, cast it, it'll always go in a straight line, it can't go any other way because you're facing the target, it's in a straight line, it can't go anywhere else by where you're aiming and where you're casting. So when you cast it out, it hits the clip, that lovely plop on the water, watch it go down, watch it on your tip, when your tip drops back you know it's at the bottom. Now you know what I'm going to say, you don't move the feed and there's a reason for that is, you don't want your hook bait away from the feeder, you want the hook bait on top of the feeder when it's on the bottom. That's the idea of putting the holes in, uh, blocking the holes in so the bait doesn't come off. And now what will happen is, all I do, I put the rod tip under and I just ease the line to make sure that it sank under the surface. And while I'm doing that, if you get a bite, don't worry about it, even though your rod's under the water, it'll, you'll still feel it on the rod. And now, as I'm sinking the line, I know that the feed is on the bottom in one piece and the, and the micros now will be swelling up and they'll be moving off the feeder to allow your hook bait for a fish to come in and take it. In the meantime then, all I do, my line sank and what I do, I put it on the rod rest, I have a back rest so it's nice and settled there, an inch off the water, no bending the tip, 
I don't like a bend in the tip, I like it. I like the line tight, but the rod straight. If there's a bend in the tip, it'd be from the natural flow. And one of the most important things in the winter, one of the most important things, be patient, be cool, be calm, and sit there. And if you know it's in the right spot, you know it's on the bottom nice, you know everything's set up, you can sit there with confidence. And then what we do, we can have a cup of tea. You've got to be patient and you've got to be calm. And, and you know, I can do that and I'm probably better than most because I've been brought up with a lad called Dennis White, who, uh, who is the most patient man on the planet. He said, in the winter, if you're going to catch one fish, you'll catch it first cast or last cast. Because usually, if fish are going to feed, it'll be later on, in the last half hour. So that's the best time to catch a fish. In the winter, you're not going to be casting in and out all the time. You're not active because the fishing isn't as good. You're not going to catch as many fish. But once you've located the fish and you can get your hook bait in around where you think the fish are going to be, it makes a big difference about being cool, calm and being patient. But you can only be patient if you're wrapped up nice and warm. You can't be fishing and be comfortable on your box, sat here for half an hour, 40 minutes and not be nice and warm. So, I mean, I've got thermals on, I've got leggings, I've got over trousers, I've got jackets on. The neck warmer is one of the most important things that I ever use for winter fishing. They're a fantastic piece of fishing equipment. And all I'm trying to do is be warm. If it's really windy and I get a, a, a north or a northeast wind, I like to put my brolly up. I'd have my brolly up this way and probably turn my rod round so I've got my back to my brolly just to keep warm. It's a massive part of winter fishing because if you're warm, you're comfortable. If you're comfortable, you'll concentrate. If you concentrate, you'll catch more fish. So you've got to put them together because if you get cold, the best thing you can do is get your tattle packed up and go home because you don't want to get cold. So get warm, be comfortable and trust me you'll enjoy it better because you'll catch more fish because you'll be in control better. a big one. This has just took 50 yard of line off. I reckon this has been in the water 40 minutes. Never got a line and never got an indication and then all of a sudden rod went. Now this is what winter fishing is all about. Now this is a big fish this. I reckon this is still 100 metres out into the lake. When I hook this fish, it tore off, I don't know how many yards of line it took. But what I'm trying to do, I don't, I don't like to keep the rod lower. I'm actually keeping it up because it's, there's some weed out there, but normally I like to keep the rod low and, and make the fish swim. But I just had to keep it up, but I think I've got it out of that, whatever it is. I don't know if it's weed or stones or... This is a big fish, this. So I've got him up top now. <coughs> Take your time. Don't do no daft. It looks a nice one. I don't know when I'm going to net this or swans first. Whoa, 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 you daft things. Oh, it's a nice fish, this. Oh my god, get in. Oh, look at that beauty. Oh, look at him. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Look inside of that! <laughs> oh, yellow fulker! Beautiful! Look at that! <laughs> That's the biggest calf I've ever caught, that! Well, that's the end of an absolutely fantastic day. I've loved and I love distance feeder fishing. 
that's how I do it. I hope you've picked a few tips up. I've re I hope you've enjoyed it half as much as what I have because today I've caught my biggest ever carp. 23 pound yellow fulca neons with the micros in the feeder. Look at that beauty. And I'm going to watch, watch him go back. There you go, my old pal. Bye. I love you. Yellow focus, get in there.